What up? Good morning, good morning, good morning. Uh, let me just adjust everything here. Give me a second, give me a second. Here we go. Just connected. Connect. All right. Let's get a show on the road. Today we are breaking down some heavyweights. Uh, these guys I picked just because we're moving through the Grand Prix fights one by one. Uh, one of them, the Iranian, uh, we watched one of his fights earlier. And the other guy is, uh, I believe it's the one from the hometown, Ivory Coast. Let's turn this down. Ivory Coast hometown fight. And I'm serious. Excuse me, Nigeria. I think he's the world champ, right? Recent world champ. That guy is really, really, really tall. Semi-final match. I think there's an announcer in the back so I can like, understand what's going on. Getting this started. Getting this started. Hmm. Just finished my uh, marketing project this morning. Right before the wire. Pretty happy about that. Pretty happy just to break down some fights with you guys. Uh, should be recording. This is going to be up on my YouTube later. You guys can catch it there. And uh, yeah, just excited to finally be back in the chair this week. Get through all my finals. Last, fi last minute projects. All that stuff. Out of the way. Head clear. Let's just watch these two giants fight each other. Nigeria is uh, super tall, knows how to use his legs, knows how to extend. I think Iran's trying to feel out exactly how far this guy's range is. Now, if I were uh, if I were Iran right now, I'd be trying to push in, look for the inside game, maybe clinch on this guy's uh, on this guy's extension. But we're not sure right now how fast he actually is. Ooh, nice try, nice try. Notice he wasn't moving back. Wasn't moving back at all. Might as well try something for the head. That was the second or third attack by Iran. Second one, he didn't move back. Tried for the head. So far, mostly just feeling each other out. Ooh, that's not a gumjang? There is a gumjang, okay. That looked like it was painful, or uh, Nigeria is a good actor. Hmm. Yeah. If we're doing a, a bunch of short kicks like this as Nigeria, I'd start playing a little bit like maybe like Dehun, inch in a little bit, get ready on that slide back. Nice try on the punch. Inch in, get ready to keep distance on uh, whenever he moves. We'll see uh, see how this goes. Nice try. Runs good, keeping distance. I think what's important to note here is that uh, Nigeria isn't kicking too much with the front leg. And I think the reason for that is because he knows uh, the Iranian's pretty fast on his uh, pretty fast on his feet. He doesn't want to give him an opportunity where he's exposed. He doesn't want to give him an opportunity uh, to gauge his timing. I think he's trying to threaten a little. It's, he's trying to threaten a little bit more now, obviously, because the round is going down. Um, that was a, try, a good try on the follow up. Uh, but I think. Either mentally a little bit intimidated, or um, he's just took out his teammate. Oh no, no, never mind. Um, as a solid guy, I think he's really just trying to figure out Iran's speed. How fast can this guy close the distance? How fast is this guy's counterattack? Can I race him to the head? Uh, Iran trying to figure out this big guy's distance. Usual, just basic game ta gameplay tactics. Uh, I'm not sure if they've scouted each other. So they've probably scouted each other before this to figure out what each other's uh, moves are, etc. But we'll see. Though. Moving to round two. 
I'd like to see a little bit more of Nigeria using what he was using at Worlds. At World Championships, he was uh, cutting, he was flicking his foot a lot more. We'll see if he brings it out this round. Looks like Iran's a little bit more active. A little bit more active on the press. Wasn't doing that too much in the first round. Iran, I think, still trying to set up the headshot. He's going to try and feel out if Nigeria's moving back. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. I don't know if I would have called that, but... Good eyes by the ref. I think Iran is established at this point already. He knows he's faster. He's just trying to make sure that he doesn't clip a... You know, clip one to the head on accident. Nigeria, I think I'd be motioning more if I were Nigeria. If I was a tall guy in this situation, I would want to be keeping around on my feet, on his feet. Let's nice try. Maybe a couple more motions. Sitting on that, maybe front leg to the face. I'm not sure why he's not bringing out the stuff he was bringing out at Worlds, though. Worlds, he was in the warm-up area. He was doing, like, holding hand kicks to the head. And I was like, bro, you're already 6'7". Fighting against you is probably going to be a nightmare. Um, he doesn't seem to be using too many of those weapons right now. Ooh, nice body shot. Good follow-up. Also with someone... Ooh, nice try. Oh, is he going to cap no capitalize? Signaling for the holding. Let's see, let's see. Almost as a ran right here, I might try for another out in, like the way he did, or the crescent kick. Um, or even spinning under that front leg might be good. That was pretty close. This was great on the body shots here. Doing a great job on the body shots. Which is actually kind of surprising, given the, his height advantage. Moving to the third round. Interesting that he's winning, and he's scoring not on the outside, if you guys noticed too. Um, Nigeria's scoring on the inside, where usually Iran would be scoring. Good job of him to be capitalizing. That's probably why he's one of the best in the world. I still think, though, that he, at least from what I remember him seeing in Worlds, maybe he's injured, maybe he's not injured, but I think the hanging kicks to the head would be uh, completely dangerous for him right now. There's just some holding right there for sure. Good follow-up. That was pretty close. It's that kind of stuff, like that headshot. That was that stuff at Worlds was crazy. I mean, to be at that tall, to have the core strength to control your legs that well, impressive, very impressive. Let's. See where this goes. Iran obviously has to pressure a lot more now. He's uh, down six points, two headshots, three body shots. I think as Nigeria, though, I would still be maybe inching forward with my feet. Still trying to apply some kind of pressure, so Iran's not just on the full offensive. You don't want... you don't. Wow, for, for fighting. Interesting. Not even a wording before. Okay. Um, yeah, I was going to say... A little, bit, a little bit low. I was going to say, um, as Nigeria, you don't want Iran just on full offensive mode. You want to be keeping him in check. Maybe some slight counter motions. Maybe some slight kicks in place. Um, watching Korea, that's I mean, that's what Daehoon does all day. He's ahead. He still presses the fight. Even if he was just sitting on this front leg, I would still like to see some forward pressure by him, though, instead of all reactive. It's not bad. I think Iran needs to capitalize on these uh on these follow-ups. I mean, it doesn't seem like Nigeria's super set afterwards. There you go. Keep him in there. Keep uh holding. That one I don't think was his bad actually. Um, I mean when Nigeria misses having legs that long, there's a long time to reload. Get that foot down. Get the foot back up. That's a long time. And uh, I think in this situation like there, he should have. Uh, if we go back, I can't go really go back without uh, messing this all up. But going back really quick, I'll pause it. In this situation, back uh, over, if you guys see my mouse. Uh, let's see. Back in this situation, Iran was already close. He was already super close to the guy. Instead of 
going back to reset here, especially when he's on the edge, Arantxa just closed it and I think should have brawled it out a little bit more. Maybe taking some body shots, tried for the head a little bit, instead of taking that one, sh one or two shots and then going back. Um, I don't think that was uh, ideal for him. I think he should capitalize, especially when Nigeria's in an unfavorable position, like in being in the corner this side. Uh, I'm not Iran, though. I didn't fight this. Let's see. Maldani's... Because the problem is Maldani's using a lot of... Uh, he's putting a lot of risk coming forward into distance like this. And once he's inside, he needs to be capitalizing because he took the risk already to get in. Something. A follow-up. Oh, he's still only one. I think if he followed up... Oh, nice try. I think if he followed up on the inside, muscled it out a little bit more, especially if someone's slender frame, such as this Nigeria guy, it'd be a lot, uh, a lot different. Nice point. I think, uh, Nigeria's going to take this for sure. I don't see, uh, I don't see him coming back in, uh, 15 seconds, but you never know. It's Taekwondo. And he's got that super long, super long legs. He's going to get out. Uh, not bad play. Just eating time. Uh, I'm to make sure this is over, make sure there's no knockout. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if Rand's tired right now. So, uh, for me, my takeaway is this match. Big one for this, uh, for this guy right here. Good job getting points on the inside. Usually that's where the taller guys, uh, when I'm fighting in the Philippines, that's where we're most exposed when we're on the inside. Good job for him for, for blocking and for holding on to the points. I think as the Iranian, when you were on the inside, you should have capitalized more. It was a lot of one shot, one shot here, one shot there. Um, I would have liked to see a little bit more brawl, especially because you're, he's, since he's smaller, uh, lower center of gravity. If he's pushing him, it's going to be harder for the taller guy to fight back. Um, also, it seems a lot like he's thicker. Uh, just like width-wise, a little bit more brawl than the uh, Nigerian. And so if you were to get into a, a brawl match there, I think that he would have won that. Um, let's see what the next fight is. Maybe we'll go through one more. Maybe we won't. Let's see. Uh, ooh, McPherson. Nice. Let's see if we can find a, a guy's a guys match, though. I'm not too good with... Uh, with analyzing women's matches, so I try not to I try and stay to games that I feel like I can actually bring you guys some value on. Let's see if we can break down one more. This one looks interesting. Who? Okay, Taipei. This guy, heavy front leg. We'll do one more. So heavy front leg, or not heavy front leg? Excuse me, dynamic front leg versus Achab. Ooh. This should be interesting. I know who wins this, uh, just because I, I broke down the Dayhood match already, but this is, should be interesting. Those of you guys who don't know, uh, type play player, dynamic, dynamic front leg, can do almost anything with this guy. Been a smaller fighter his entire uh, his entire career, but still able to win. Uh, still able to find a way around the kicks. Does an amazing job. Yeah, Ajab's amazing, amazing fighter. I follow his Instagram. It's pretty cool. All right. Ooh, oh my gosh, what a sneaky, sneaky, sneaky. I want to see that. Just see what technique he used. What a sneaky, sneaky uh, first point. Take that one more. Yeah, we're definitely going to... This is going to be very interesting. Sorry this rewound so much, guys. I wish I could get the um, the more precise interval, but the, the recording's for four hours, so we're stuck here. Great cut kick. Starting it off right away. Achab with the forward pressure. I really like this forward pressure by Achab. This is, uh, this is what I think as a smaller opponent, or just in general, you should be doing. This is what Dehun's entire offense is built on. Keeping the forward pressure. Taipei is um, immediately on the back foot because uh, Achab is bringing so much forward pressure. Not necessarily with kicks, but with the footwork.
Yep, and immediately bring the pressure, not letting Taipei relax at all. I like it. I like it. As a smaller player, I don't think it's good for you to sit passive. I don't think it's okay for you to let the tall guy dictate um, what's going to happen in the fight because he has longer range than you. You got to pick the time and the place constantly, way more often than the taller guy has to because you have the risk of having to close the distance. So I really like these forward motions by Achab. Yeah, good, uh, good call, good bait by Achab to bring that out. Do you sneak it in? Nope. It is going to be difficult for Achab to uh, to get around that front leg. So, uh, Taipei is super good with it. His entire entire game is built off of it. Ooh, no call. I think, uh, yeah, this has been good sportsman. Yep. Whoa, what? I wouldn't have done that. I mean, he's like six inches taller than him already. I granted it was a little bit low, but I, w I wouldn't have called that. Good. I really, I still like this forward pressure. Taipei has is having is having trouble figuring out what to do because he's trying to think about how do I go offensive and then Ajay pressures and then he's back on the defensive mindset and then has to reset back forward. Really good. Oop. Okay. Nice try. I like it. I like it by I like the pressure by Achab a lot. There you go. Taipei's finally got found his footing. Finally trying to hit back a little bit. End of round one. I think uh good job by Achab. Amazing forward pressure. I really like it. Um as Taipei, I feel like if he's unsure, he doesn't need to stand there against Sachab the entire time. He can rotate back out. He can motion again. He can rotate back in. As a taller player, you can disengage to pick up the time and place. You don't have to fight on every motion that your opponent is throwing at you. This guy looks like he's five. Sachab looks like a grown man in a small guy's body. The, uh, the Taipei player looks like a baby in a grown man's body. Like, pretty young. Super young fighter. He's like Kobe. My little brother Kobe looks like he's seven, but he's six one. So as a smaller player, you don't want the taller player to have momentum to have to do stuff like that. You don't want him thinking about maybe I can flick this, maybe not. You want him guessing about where he has to throw his momentum, where uh, what distance he has to throw his kick. If he needs to defend, is it, is it actually something on your offense? You want him guessing constantly. Amazing forward pressure. Looks like Taipei has his bearing. Jump a little bit more cautious. Not motioning as much anymore. This is a as I, if I were Acha right now, I'd be looking for a spin. Spin underneath the front leg. I'm not sure if that's in Archab's arsenal though. I think it should be. Nice try. Cutting it down. I think Achab's gonna try headshot next. Oh, maybe. Well, with this kind of reset, I'm not sure. If they went right away, I think it would have went for a headshot. He's trying to bait Taipei into uh, constantly expect the clinch. That was kind of long though, so I don't know if he's going to use that anymore. We'll see if uh, Achab tries to set that up. Yeah. Ooh. Oh, it's, uh, it's just the uh, height. It's okay. Stuff happens. Stuff happens. There have been times actually where there's a clear miss and points go up. So the Daedu armor, the Daedu armor is not 100% yet. It's very light. Sometimes a grazing magnet. Sometimes you're rocking your head while you're in range of the magnet, but it doesn't actually hit. Those will trigger it. Trigger it. I'm not sure if Achab's. It seems like Achab's a little bit tired now, maybe from his first rounds. He's not making the pressure anymore. And obviously Taipei is ahead right now. He doesn't need to expend so much energy. And I think he's kind of content letting here. If Achab doesn't want to move, he's down. I think Taipei's content doing that. I would still say maybe motion. Maybe keep the guy in check. Belgian seems a little bit stuck on how to how to get around the front leg now that he's down. Good try of mixing it up with a back leg. I don't mind that. I don't know about that punch, though. As a taller guy, I don't like... Ooh, nice try. 
I don't like trying to punch a smaller guy as a tall guy because it brings my head down to uh, if it, it takes away my height advantage because I have to go down to their level. If they throw a head kick, then it's just like, well, what was the point? Oh, maybe holding. That's holding. Okay, it's getting a little bit closer. But getting a little bit closer. I think Aljab might try and jungle it or get a gum, give this guy gum junk to equal it. Yeah, only one. As Aljab, maybe try and get force a gum jung. Um, and then still, uh, hopefully, uh, what, what I assume is Achab's maybe reserving the energy for the third round to keep the high-pressure game again. Because I was working for him first round. Type A didn't know what to do. Uh, second round seemed like he's getting a little bit tired, a little bit more stationary, creates problems. Um, I also think that if Achab had blocked, you know, instead of all the way up, had covered it on the side, maybe that blocked it. We'll see. Is this the highlight of it? or uh, There it is. Oh, he really just didn't see it. Came all the way from the outside. That happens sometimes. Um, when your eyes are blocking, try and make sure it's not straight up. Try and make sure it's behind the head. Uh, anything else? Um, as Taipei, pretty content. I still think slight forward pressure dictate time and place. If you don't want, if you don't like the engage as a taller guy, don't be afraid to take a hujin, take a slide back, circle out a little bit, refocus. You want to be take. As, as a fighter in this game, you want to be dictating the fight all the time. You pick the time, you pick the place. Um, and if you guys watch uh, a big... I'm a huge fan of Dehoon and his fighting style. I think he dictates a fight 24-7. If you're down, if you're up, it doesn't matter. He's going to be pushing you. That's where you want to be. Last round. Last fight. Last round I'm going to analyze today, too, unless this goes to sudden death. Um, let's see. Taipei is bringing the forward pressure. Like, good. Ooh, got the point. I like it. Achab down, still not sure now, and it makes it makes it harder for him to do his offense. Like I said, because Taipei's still uh, still trying to ooh injury. Yeah, pull hamstring maybe. Uh, looks like a lot of pain. Uh, I'm not sure actually. Yeah. Um, if I could fast forward this guy, I'd fast forward this. I'm not sure if it's a... Is it a low kick? It looks like a low kick because he's touching it and it's painful. If it was a hamstring injury, I'd assume that if he bends it, it's painful because that's like using the muscle. Let's try an eye chop to uh, go down. Maybe he gets the gum junk, maybe not. If I could fast forward this guy as accurately, I would fast forward so you guys don't have to watch it, but I can't. Uh, otherwise, it'll skip too far ahead because the timer on this is... Four hours. Four, almost five hours. Yeah. He's, yep, he's, well, he's going for it. It looks like a contact injury, though, to me. Ooh, right off the bat, nice try, job. You got to capitalize on that sometimes, especially if you're down. He pull this through. Does he pull it out? I like how Achab's in his face. If you watch their feet, super close together. I think Achab could be looking for a punch and then maybe follow up afterwards. Oh, and he scored it. Good job. That's exactly. That's exactly it. Uh, smaller guy, crowd, crowd the taller guy. Don't let him feel comfortable. I think Achab was saving a second round for his third to make sure he can go out like this um, and shove the game into his face. Good job by him. Oh my gosh, it scored again. That's quite unfortunate. Unfortunate. Unfortunate for Achab that scored. A lot of time and effort went into his couple points. Taipei with the height advantage just dropped it right over his arms. <laughs> quite unfortunate. That left out in is blindsided him. But as Achab, I, I like the forward pressure. I think what he was doing initially, good. I think he should rotate himself back into the middle. Um... Back into the middle this way. Oh, I can't. You guys can't see it anywhere. But if he rotate himself back in the middle and then presses uh, Taipei out, so if he goes in here because right now they're standing kind of sideways, and then pushes him back out, a little bit better chance of scoring, crowding the Taipei player, limiting the options. I think he's just throwing whatever he can now. I think uh, Ajab's probably kind of tired. 
Unfortunately, I pretty, this is pretty much a game already. Um, Taipei doing a good job scoring underneath. I think Achab should have mixed it up, maybe with a little bit more footwork instead of uh, straight kicking, but in general, good forward pressure. I liked it. Uh, as a smaller guy, it's the hard part. You gotta, as a smaller player, it's hard because you have to take the risk to close the distance. You have to take the risk to put your body in harm's way to get to the other guy first. And then when you're on the inside, if the tall guy is smart, like Taipei play player right here, can, can exchange, um, you got to cover yourself and hope for the best. I think if I were Achab in this situation, I maybe would have spun a little bit, maybe a little bit more because he, uh, because he's a smaller guy, a smaller person, you do have advantage, um, in my opinion, when you spin. Uh, gives you a little bit faster. And knowing Taipei's front leg heavy, that's what I would have done. Uh, anyway, guys, uh, that's about it for today. Come back tomorrow around 11 a.m. I'll be doing another fight breakdown. Same thing all this week. And if you guys missed the videos, I'll be posting them on YouTube. Thank you guys for tuning in. Love you. Uh, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Have a good day.